the Washington Commanders brass is getting active in the Indianapolis streets as the scouting combine commenced started yesterday in Indianapolis. We heard from Adam Peters. We heard from head coach Dan Quinn. Not only did we hear from them in a media scrum, which is a combination of local and national media, they were both on radio shows as well. On 106.7 The Fan, Adam Peters was on Grant and Danny. Dan Quinn was on the Junkies this morning. They're playing name association with the quarterbacks. Adam, P They're getting busy in these streets, and it is a refreshing day to be a Washington Commanders fan. So what's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? How y'all feeling this morning? It is Wednesday. February 28th, the penultimate day of the month, and it is day two of the scouting combine. I believe today is going to be the day where uh, prospects will be showing up, getting measurements and um, medicals out the way. So we're going to be seeing all those crazy looking numbers for height and weight popping up. We're going to be hearing things about medicals and stuff like that. Yesterday, everyone's contingents of combinations of coaching and front office members spoke to the media. And while you're not going to get nothing too definitive or too juicy in Indianapolis, because there's a game to be played here and everything these guys say, you should hear it. You should marinate over it, but kind of take it with a grain of salt because everybody has an agenda to spill right now. Everybody has some type of mental gymnastics to play when it comes to draft season but some guys are going to give you some good nuggets out of here i mean i heard um brandon bean of the buffalo bills say yesterday when talking about the risk and the gambles you take when it comes to trading up for quarterback because remember the bills had to trade up twice from the 20s and then the teens up to seven to get josh allen brandon bean was like here's how i felt we're gonna trade up for this guy and if it doesn't work out i'm not gonna be here anyway so if it don't work out it is what it is, bro. Sometimes you just got to slide your cards to the middle of the table and you have to shoot and dream big. But I'm here for the aggressiveness. And a lot was said from Dan Quinn and Adam Peters. But before we get to them, I just wanted to mention the team that controls the draft, the Chicago Bears, their GM had the most replayed headline of the day during his media scrum, because you know, the number one pick in back-to-back -back years, will they take Caleb? Will they trade Justin Fields? That's the biggest story surrounding the 2024 NFL draft. And Ryan Poles officially added some zest to that story when he said, I want to do right by Justin Fields. So if we decide we're going to be going quarterback number one, my goal is to have Justin traded by the start of free agency. Today is the second to last day of February. Free agency starts in two weeks. So Ryan Poles theoretically just put out a timeline to the entire league. You have two weeks to knock our socks off if you're pondering trading up to the number one pick in the NFL draft. But this show today is about Dan Quinn and Adam Peters' press conferences yesterday with the no local and national media where, for one, it's nice to hear football, savvy, respected. Like, these are two heralded and revered guys in league circles. Everybody's hopping on the local media's podcast. Man, we're so happy for you guys. You guys are, we're rooting for Dan and Adam. You could not have found a more likable duo to shepherd our next era of Washington football. Everybody loves them. And Adam Peters is so damn pleased in the position that he sits. You see the Hollywood ear to ear smile. The second he walks in any room, he commands it. He captivates it. And he has such a soft spoken confidence about him. Like he doesn't have to say too much, but he says just enough. And there's this calculated transparency when he speaks and he doesn't take the bait for anything they tried to get him to take the bait on. And I know everybody's going to be focused on one sentence that he said during yesterday's presser. They were asking him about 
how does he feel after the Trey Lance trade and then eventually finding Brock Purdy as the last pick of the NFL draft? And when talking about Purdy, he said, if we knew he was going to be that good, we probably would have selected him sooner. But now I've got to find a new quarterback. So what everybody did was listen to about 15 minutes of Adam Peters dropping gems being transparent enough but not showing our hand and letting you know that we're very early in the process and no decisions are made because we haven't even spoke to guys yet. Everybody's running with this one sentence. Now we've got to find a new quarterback. For one, this is not rocket science. Washington is picking second in what they call a QB rich draft with a huge need at the quarterback position. It's not rocket science for him to, oh, Adam Peters slipped up. No, he didn't slip up. Like everybody knows we're taking a quarterback. Everybody knows we're interested in quarterback. Everybody knows we need a quarterback. Nothing to see here. Peters, when asked about Cliff Kingsbury and his relationship with Caleb Williams, he said they've talked about the quarterbacks in general, but they're looking at all options. Says he's met and talked with Sam Howe. And he feels really good about him, too. You got to go through the process. And nobody hates Sam Howe. So they're not going to say a damning word about Sam Howe. And when asked about needing a veteran quarterback, if you draft somebody at two, he kept it short and sweet. You want to have the best competition, no matter the position. But with draft trades, this one, this one definitely made my eyebrows perk up a little bit. He said, on the possibility of trading up or down, or just being involved in trades in general. Adam said, with anything that happens in this league, you always want to be involved in it. Whether you actually pull the trigger, and like, whatever you decide to do with the information you attain, you do it, but you want to be actively involved in it. That is what a professional sounds like. Washington weren't making no moves. Literally, the biggest move we made during Ron's tenure was trading for a jalopy, Carson Wentz from Indianapolis, a guy that was going to be released in the coming weeks. We decided to move multiple day two picks for. That's what the old Washington was. Adam Peters said, even if you're not making a move, you want your name in the conversation. You want to know what's going on and you can do whatever you will with that information. We have adamant and consummate professionals running this operation now in D.C. Love to hear it. Love to hear it on the conversation about improving the player's experience. He said, you know how construction goes. It doesn't go real fast. It's going to take time. But he said verbatim, uh, we don't feel the need to use the franchise or transition tag. So that answers the question for anybody. I don't know why people thought we were tagging Cam Curl. Adam Peters let us know straight up. We've had talk with Cam's representatives and we're exploring options, but at this current juncture, we're not going to be picking up any tags on anybody. I like Cam Curl. Cam Curl is a very solid starter for this team. I think he dramatically increases the floor of this defense. We're still unsure of how he impacts the ceiling of the defense, but at least he is a very good starter. Giving him the franchise tag of $17 million is absolutely unnecessary, and I agree with us not picking up any tags on any player on this roster. I don't see anybody who fits the characteristics for a tag guy, but... Adam Peters, you could tell, was getting very fatigued about the quarterback question. When Mitch Titchler finally asked him about a position other than quarterback, he said, thank you. Thank you for your non-quarterback question. He was going to be asked about everything under the bus about the quarterback position. He said leadership, and you, you, you like to see a guy today that can give you some mobility as well. Leadership and mobility were the two characteristics he talked about when it came to quarterbacks and everybody's going to use every line, every sentence, every word, every adjective to make it fit, to make it fit who we want to be selected by the team. Oh, he said mobile. It's Jaden Daniels. The top three guys in the draft are all mobile. Jaden Daniels is more than mobile. He has game changing ability. And 
Dan Quinn, when asked about uh, Jaden Daniels, he did say he's a game changer because they played a name association game. Shout out to Jalen Morgan, my boy from Bleeding BNG. Dan Quinn was on the Junkies this morning. They had him play a word association game with the head coach, Dan Quinn. And they said the three quarterbacks' names, and he said the first word that came to mind. For Drake May, he said athletic. For Caleb Williams, he said D.C. For Jaden Daniels, he said game changer. We drafting Caleb, we drafting Jaden Daniels, y'all. Don't take too much from that, but it is something. It's something to hold on to. And in a time where we're fishing for any type of news to grasp on to, we're going to take everything with we're going to take everything at face value and as the gospel when we hear it. Also on Grant and Danny, Adam Peters was asked by, about the 90 million we have to spend in free agency and if we're going to go crazy. And he said it's not like we're going to be on some big spending spree. We're not going to go out and blow all that money in year 1. We're going to build a competitive team with the right types of guys then have a great draft after that. No, that's not closing the door on Washington being aggressive in the offseason. It's just saying we're going to be calculated but aggressive. It's not saying we're not going to spend any money or we're going to shop at Goodwill like Ron Rivera and company and trying to get A production from D-plus players. That's not what Adam Peters is saying. He's saying that we're not putting Band-Aids over bullet holes and we're not going to go out and try to rebuilt the entire roster in one offseason. We're going to do what we can. We're going to get better, and we're going to get guys to establish an identity. Washington doesn't have an identity. When I say identity, you know when you talk about certain teams in the league, you say, that guy feels like a Raven. He feels like a 49er. That guy feels like a New England Patriot. Washington has not had a consistent identity for the majority of my fan life. Adam Peters wants us to have an identity, an identity. And him and Dan Quinn are in lockstep on the fact that we need to establish an identity here in DC. So I like to hear that. That does not scare me off. That does not make me think we're not going to spend on anybody. I just think we're going to be wise in who we target and we're not going to feel like we have to offer guys though dan snyder had one way of doing business don't let them get off the plane until they sign the contract those days are over the vinnie serrato dan snyder spending sprees and giving nose tackles a hundred million dollars and signing adam archuleta to be the most expensive safety in the league those days in dc are over and we got a little bit more context about the role of Eugene Shin, analytics guy that we brought on, the guy that was brought on before the coaching staff. Eugene Shin was hired months before Adam Peters and Dan Quinn and company. Peters said, we've had a really good dialogue. He can work with coaching, personnel, free agent pricing. He's really been enthusiastic. I'm excited to work with him. So Eugene Shin is one of the more important shot callers in all of the front office because he he dips his toe into a little bit of everything game strategy acquisitions draft position analytics is over the, the, the analytics umbrella is sitting over the entire operation so eugene shin will be playing a part in all things washington so that is going to be interesting as well but for the most part adam peters didn't get too into detail about too much he kept it cool, but detailed, and he answered everybody's question. He seemed very excited and happy to be there. He was destined to be a general manager. He was I ear to ear smile the entire time. It's a new day in DC. These press conferences feel drastically different than what Ron Rivera's felt like. Um, the Lions GM Brad Holmes talked about losing assistant general manager Lance Newmark to the commanders. He said, that's a big loss for us. Washington's getting a really strong evaluator. So add another evaluator to the room of evaluators that we have here now that is headed by Adam Peters. And Dan Quinn marveled about Adam Peters in the film room. He said he went home to his wife and said, oh no, that guy's different. That guy is special 
how he evaluates talent. He said him and Adam Peters spent four hours plus chopping up film and getting to know how each other's brain works as far as evaluation and how they scout talent to put on this roster. That got me excited. That got the hairs on my arms raised up a little bit. I wanted to charge at a wall after reading it. But Dan Quinn, his presser was very interesting because this guy has a hunger and a desire to prove that his first tenure as a head coach, he's going to improve on it. You can tell he's pondered every decision he made during his time in Atlanta, and he's been scratching and clawing to get another chance. He's been so vigorously hungry to get back as a head coach. He knew the exact amount of days since he got fired by the Atlanta Falcons. He said, yeah, it's been 1,234 days since I was let go of by Atlanta. That boy is keeping count. That boy means business. And I'm not into numerology, but when you see one, two, three, four in sequence as such, that means having luck in any new endeavor you try and letting go of negative energy as well as having positive energy coming your way. I'm here for all the good juju, good vibrations, and positive vibes that surround this new regime of Washington football. But that boy said, I've been counting down the days. It's been 1,234 days since I was let go. He's been thinking about it ever since. Reflecting on his playoff loss to the Green Bay Packers, he said, those are the games that leave a scar. The team had been excellent about not allowing explosive plays, and certainly that game wasn't. He also talked about mobile quarterback. This is not specifically meaning they're handpicking Jaden Daniels, but they both talked about wanting a quarterback with mobility. No shit. It's 2024. Most of the quarterbacks in the league are mobile. The statue pocket quarterback, those days have died of that being the majority league wide. So that, that should not surprise you too much, but you know, they're going to get sick of talking about, they're going to get sick of talking about the quarterback position, but a good offense needs to have play action and a run game and good quarterback play, Dan Quinn said. And he said, Adam Peters just has a stronger feel than most as an evaluator. And he said he is elite in the film room. I'm going to take his word on it. We learned that he had the best. His favorite Jordan is the Jordan 11s. He talked about Sam Howe's competitiveness, but the overall consensus between the two interviews is that these guys are on the same page. These guys are on the same page. We're no longer are the days here where someone's going to step off the boat and draft a player that the football guys didn't want. I remember Kyle Smith saying in an interview that he wanted to throw up when Dan made them take Dwayne Haskins because nobody had a first round grade on him. But Dan Quinn has been so reflective about what he could have done better the first time. You know, a lot of people make excuses when they do things wrong. They like to point the finger at everybody. You can tell he's spent a lot of times thinking about what he could have done better as the Atlanta head coach, just like Adam Peters. He gave Sam Howell his propers, called him a tough SOB pretty much. I'm paraphrasing, by the way, but Quinn and Peters speak the language of football and these are two guys that's easy to get behind. I was not familiar with your game, Dan Quinn. I didn't understand why you were so loved and revered in league circles. I am totally all in on this hire. Everybody's all in on the Adam Peters hire. And we're starting off our Combine Week Wednesday with an interview with Jaden Daniels, the quarterback aforementioned, the LSU Tigers Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. He's the first reported interview of the Washington Commanders, but I'm sure they're going to meet with all the quarterbacks. I'm sure they're going to meet with Nicks, McCarthy, uh, Penix. We know they're going to meet with Caleb and Drake May. And what you're hearing from them too is there's no quarterback decision that's been made already. They haven't decided what they're doing yet. They're just, he's like, we're not, they're like, we haven't even met these dudes yet. And then Quint mentioned that one of the things you can easily be fooled with is who a person is. He was like, the tape usually doesn't lie to you, but. In these concise interviews, 15 to 20 minute speed dating style interviews with prospects, you don't get a true feel for them. 
you get more of a feel when you bring them into your facilities for a top 25 or a team visit because they talked about the nerves of the players. Dan Quinn talked about the difference between the combine, how it used to be. It used to be one big clusterfuck of just grabbing guys as they come off the field. Hey, come interview with us now. He said it's a lot more, a lot more structured and a lot more space to get in, get out, and get things done. But he said the nerves of some of the players, you never necessarily know if you're getting the real them when you're just getting 15 minutes with a guy in the most nerve wracking meat market underwear Olympic style situation they've ever been in, in their lives. I'm very pleased from what I've heard from both guys. They're not showing our hand, but they're also being transparent. They're being detailed and they're communicating with us about what's happening. Just now reading that Washington lost the naming rights to their stadium. FedEx is pulling back the naming rights two years early. Pretty sure I'm going to make a video on that coming soon. I'm not mad at that at all. I'm pretty sure most people wanted FedEx off after they were the ones who kind of facilitated the name change situation here. I know my boy Zach can't stand FedEx. With all the damn colorful seats we had in our stadium looking like a fucking circus for all those years. But the GM speaks, the head coach speaks, not only in the media, not only at Combine Week, they're hopping on the radio row as well. And look out for news because we could be hearing about a Justin Fields trade as soon as today. And the Bears have put out a timeline for when they're going to make a decision about what they're going to do at quarterback. So Full steam ahead. Combine week is here. Dan Quinn and Adam Peters speak. Let me know what you guys thought about what you heard in their press conferences. And if you've not watched them, do so on the Washington Commanders YouTube channel. They got both media scrums up there in totality. That's all I got for right now. Hail to the Washington Commanders. Until next time, Rio out.